so let's take a little bit of a look on the, at the activity that's been taking place on the internet over the last week or so here. And uh, if you're really pressed for time, just go and look at last week's because there are not any significant changes here. And um, but we'll go and take a look, look at them and uh, have a, a few little comments. First one is uh, scan probes on port 18186 TCP. Now we had uh, basically uh, investigated this. This is actually associated with a particular, uh, basically with a healthcare type application. But I don't think that's really what's being looked for. We uh, are speculating that it has something to do with checkpoint firewall. I honestly don't know exactly what the application is that they're hunting for, but the fact is, is they're uh, continuing to hunt for it and they are basically persistent doing that. Uh, that's been going on for the last couple of weeks now and you can see uh, clearly the activities there. Now, relatively speaking, we, we had mentioned before that this could possibly be related to uh, scanning activity on port 135. I'm a little less uh, convinced that that's the case. There are some, certainly some similarities in the, in the activity. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, port 135 uh, scanning activity in a moment here. But one thing that I'd like to point out is that this activity is not nearly as aggressive as the uh, scanning activity we've seen on port 135. Next one here is scan probes and sources. Uh, we've seen a significant increase in the sources scanning on port 7778 TCP. We talked about this last week as well. That's associated with the Oracle HTTP server and the last round of updates where there were some critical updates associated with the, the Oracle database. Those were issued in April. Now, I don't know if this is a delayed response to that activity. We mentioned last week that we've seen it actually fairly typically that when the updates have come out, there's been scanning activity looking for them. This one is particularly aggressive in activity. It, it, not hugely aggressive, but uh, what we're seeing here in terms of, again, that sawtooth pattern that we uh, talked about on port 5000 earlier, we're seeing that sort of activity here as well, where we're seeing on the order of hundreds of sources that are doing scanning activity. It's tapering off, and we saw a resurgence of the activity just a, a couple of days ago. Certainly, there may be some, uh, something that somebody has found to be interesting. Hey, Brian, for those who don't know what that botnet sawtooth pattern indicates, can you explain a little bit more? Oh, certainly. You know, when uh, obviously a botnet is a large number of uh, computers that are under a central command and control. And uh, as you can see, there's a very abrupt uh, start in the activity associated with the scanning activity. Basically, uh, somebody issued a command to a lot of the devices and said, you know, go out and scan on this port and try to find devices that potentially to have this service available and potentially uh, are, are, uh, would be vulnerable to exploit. Now, as the devices are doing that processing, they may have been given a command that say, you know, go, go scan 65,000 addresses or 100,000 addresses or a million or something like that. Different devices are going to have different processing loads associated with them. And so over time, different devices are going to complete their task in a different amount of time. And so you start to see the the devices dropping off in terms of that, you know, performing that activity over at, at different times as well. So you start to see this decay of, uh, of that activity. And then when the botnet operator comes back and issues the command again, it jumps back up and then they start uh, that decay process subsequently as well. So uh, we see that quite often in, you know, botnet activity where they're in reconnaissance activity where they're given some sort of command to do something. And we see that in denial service attacks as well, where they'll be uh, told to go out and, you know, perform a denial service attack and then eventually, uh, you know, in fact, sometimes the, uh, the devices will be told to do a denial service attack and it may be indefinite. They lose the command and control. And so you'll see the, uh, those bots, continue they'll continue doing that, but that denial service attack indefinitely, despite the fact that the botnet operator has told them to stop. So it's sort of the inverse type effect that uh, sometimes can occur. Question that. And uh, next one here is uh, bytes. Speaking of denial of service attacks, uh, bytes on source port 161 UDP. This is a simple network management protocol, and uh, as we've been reporting many times, this is another protocol that's being used in uh, reflection type denial of service attacks. We're seeing numerous targets in this attack activity. I'm showing 180 days of activity here, so you can see the uh, change in the trend. Still not significantly large attacks relative to some of the things that we've seen with like network time protocol and, and uh, DNS being used in reflections, but it's all a matter of perspective. 
I'm looking at it and describing it to you in terms of what an internet service provider would look at it as, but if you were on the receiving end of any one of these attacks, it would not be insignificant. These are up in the orders of you know hundreds of megabits per second. Most end users would find that to be somewhat devastating if they don't have some sort of a protection plan in place. So uh, this is something you know, want to watch out for. You know, if you're getting an, an attack of this type, you can filter out anything with source port 161, and that'll help to do things so long as you have the capacity to do it, or you can uh, use a DDoS mitigation provider to do that. Even still, you'd probably want to filter it out further upstream than... than further upstream is you know, better. Depending on if, who you are and, right. and what type of service you have. If you're just filtering it out of your local router right before it gets into your enterprise, that mm -hmm. might not really help you that much because uh, it's still hitting you. Yeah, good point. And you know, the other, the other aspect of this that I, um, I'm not showing is that you're show, we're looking at one port here. Most of these attacks have multiple facets associated with them. There may be a SYN attack combined with uh, maybe using other ports for, uh, for real function attack activity. So this is one set of activity and uh, I did not go in to do analysis to see if for any one of these targets that we saw other types of traffic associated with those as well. So it could have been much larger for any one of those victims. Next item here is, uh, we already alluded to this, uh, the scan probes on port 135 TCP. This is the endpoint mapping uh, application associated with Microsoft. It's not really used uh, in uh, modern Windows operating systems, but it still apparently has some interest out there. Most of these probes are coming from multiple addresses in China. We've been reporting that. The one thing I wanted to sort of point out here is there was a resurgence of activity here as well. This on the, uh, looks like the, uh, on June 12th, there was a resurgence of that activity. There apparently is a renewed interest. I'll, I'll look at it, you know, look at it that way. I think you can see perhaps subtly there's a little bit of a sawtooth pattern in, in this activity as well, but it has some different characteristics. So that's part of what's kind of making me a little bit softer about the relationship between port 118, 186 activity and this one is they just don't seem to have the exact same pattern of activity. So perhaps they're not as related as, as I originally thought. Looking at the top 10 most probed ports here, no significant movement. We have a little bit of movement in there, but no, nothing significant. We already talked about port 135 TCP. Port 22 TCP is next, that's SSH. 1433 TCP, that's Microsoft SQL Database. Port 445, all of these are typically seen in here. Port 53 UDP, 80 TCP, port 23 TCP, Telnet. Port 8080 TCP, an alternative port for uh, port 80 or for web. 3389 remote desktop protocol, and last on here is uh, port 443 TCP. Now we haven't shown much related to port 22 recently, so I wanted to give you a little bit additional insight into that. A couple of things that are worth observing. This is 90 days of activity of scanning, that is scan probes on port 22 TCP. And you can see that there are some you know, little surges of activity that are taking place. And then other areas that are of interest here, notice there are some gaps in the activity. This is uh, right around, it looks like May 30th or May 31st where it effectively turned off for a period of time and you see these little gaps in activity that are taking place there. That is real. That is, that's not an interruption in our data analysis activity. That's a real interruption in the scanning activity, which gives you a pretty strong indication that there's really one thing behind most of this scanning activity. And uh, as you know, any providers concerned about uh, impact to their, uh, uh, their operations of, you know, the, this botnet operator that's performing the scanning activity apparently had some disruption in their, in their operations activity as well, but quickly fixed that and resumed their scanning activity. That's uh, one aspect of this that is, it appears that most of this activity is associated with a single organization. And then the other aspect of it is, we are seeing a bit of an upward trend here in terms of continuing to probe on this port. And in most cases we've seen this, it appears to be password guessing activities and sometimes sort of educated password guessing, sometimes just looking for relatively mundane default passwords, that sort of thing. And the next item here is the uh, top 10 most sources doing probing and uh, port 445 being at the top of the list, nothing unusual there, followed by port 23 TCP, port 80, port 8080. We have some gaming activities showing up here, port 27015, that's point-to-point -point activity, P2P. And then we also have a uh, port associated with the zero access botnet. Forgive me here, I'm drawing a blank. 17788, we talked about that last week. 
and uh, I don't recall specifically what that was. So I'm going to have to go back and refer to my notes from last week. We did actually investigate this, but I neglected to update it for today. And the last thing I wanted to show here is the daily reconnaissance index. This basically looks at the amount of probing activity we've seen over the last 400 days. Clearly, we are continuing to see an upward trend. We're almost at the highest point that we've seen at least over the last year. Not quite, there was a little spike otherwise, but this would be attributable to, we saw the increase in the scanning activity on port 135 and other activities. I mentioned the uh, sort of the, the subtle upward trend in port 22 activity as well. But notably, the number of sources that are actually doing that probing has gone down a little bit, contrary to the, uh, in terms of the number of probes gone up significantly. So if we were seeing a large increase in the number of sources that were doing the probing, that would indicate, you know, a large botnet that's uh, that's propagating, and or you know, perhaps even a worm. Uh, one type of concern that we have, and then the uh, number of probes is really just a, sort of an indication of how aggressively uh, maybe smaller groups are doing the uh, probing activity. I think that might have been PP Stream at seventeen seventy. Oh, absolutely right. Which yes, is thank a you. Streaming PP. media. Chinese right. in it's, origin. Uh, it's a, uh, so it's a legitimate application. Yeah, legitimate application, that we've seen. but for yeah. streaming television or something like yeah, that. Yeah, thank you, John.